Hello and welcome to part 3 of this 6.3 km Westminster sightseeing photo run. In this section we cover Victoria Embankment Gardens and Cleopatra's Needle. Part 3 of this tour basically goes back towards Embankment Station from Waterloo Bridge as we can see from the map shown here. So this is going to be much more relaxing because it will be going through Victoria Embankment Gardens basically but we will be finishing at the station not going back up to Charing Cross as it's shown here. Now whereas there was nothing in 1560 there was a lot going on in 1560 on this side of the river. Obviously you had Savoy Palace which had been built in here. You had Somerset House on this side and you had Durham House as well as the Whitehall Palace towards this side. So this is where nobility had their houses fronting the riverside. The map of 1775 actually shows Somerset House as it looks today. So this is the, the new building that was created more for government departments. The Savoy had become a hospital and was quite dilapidated at this stage. And the rest of the buildings along this side had become more accommodating from the ever-growing size of London. And then we can see how things changed when they put in the Victoria Embankment. Now, as we see, it's just a blank space in here. But once they'd pulled the embankment and put the roads and the trains in, then built parks along the space that was in between. And this is a quick map of some of the sites that you could see along the way. We start the run at the top of the bridge. And we go down a set of stairs. And when we get to the bottom, we turn right and we go underneath the bridge past the IT building and then just as we start to go along here there's a turn on your right hand side which will bring you into Victoria Embankment Gardens. We go along here till we get to the Savoy River entrance then we go out towards the Cleopatra's Needle along Victoria Embankment. Now we go around, take a look at the view, take a look at the Sphinx, cross the road again and then go back the same way as we've just come and we take the first turn in on our left hand side back into Victoria Embankment Gardens. We've got the Shell Mex House on the right hand side. We've got a cafe come up here on our left and then it opens out past Robert Byrne statue and then we head down towards the York Gate and then around the corner past the bandstand and then back out into Villiers Street and the Embankment Station where we stop before I show you the sights along the way, I'm going to show you a few 360 pictures to help you along the way. So we start this section with Somerset House in front of you, the stairs that we're going to go down, and that's the road that we're going to end up to, which is Victoria Embankment. And this is just a sort of view about what you could see around you. So we go down the stairs, and when we get to the bottom, we turn right, we go under the bridge, and this is what's in front. We've got the IT in front of you there. This is the bridge that we've just come through and we're just going to go into the gardens where it says the Savoy there. There's a small little gate. This will bring you into Victoria Embankment Gardens and uh, this is a picture of the Savoy, the riverside entrance. And this is where we've just come from and we're just, this is where we're going to go. And um, at this particular junction we're just going to go out onto the road itself. So that's where we've just come from. We're just going to go out there towards... Cleopatra's Needle, which you can just see. Um, this is just a view of the road, looking quite empty. Okay, go around Cleopatra's Needle, and this is what it should look like, um, with uh, pictures of the river in front of you. So as we swing around that, we just end up going back the same way as we've come, which is just, but this is a picture looking the other way around. And then when we get back into the gardens here, we turn right, and uh, head towards the cafe, it's basically going past the Cleopatra's Needle there, so we can see the cafe in front of us, and then we've got Robert Burns in front, and that's the where the old Adelphi used to be. And then we get back to York Gate, uh, this is what it, where the river used to come up to before they built the embankment, so you can see how far it's come forward. And then there's the station in front, and we're just going to come back and end up at the station, just through the, by the bandstands, and that's... Uh, the start place for the next part of the route and that's what we've just come down come through and that was Villa Street you just saw up the top there. The first building that we see is Somerset House which was 
given to the Duke of Somerset in 1547 by, by Henry VIII's son, Edward VI. And he built the house, but then he had his head chopped off in 1552, so it was taken back to the crown and made a royal palace. It was rebuilt again in 1776, but it became a government building and the architect was uh, William Chambers. The entrance you can see from this side is the river side entrance and you can go through into the main entrance and see the fountains here. But the main entrance is in the Strand and there's also the entrance to the Courtauld Museum. But again, like many places in London, there's a lot of exhibitions in here as well as places to eat and drink. So it's also well worth a visit. When you get down the stairs and go along and go under the bridge, you'll then see the IET building, which is for the Institute of Engineering and Technology. It was originally for the physicians and surgeons when it was built, but it was made famous by Michael Faraday, who was looking at electromagnetism and electrolysis in the 1850s. So he is one of our famous inventors, and not surprisingly, this became then became the Institute of Electoral Engineers. One of the more interesting monuments in the Victoria Embankment Gardens is the statue to Sir Arthur Seymour Sullivan. He was part of the duo of Gilbert and Sullivan. Sullivan was the composer and Gilbert was the dramatist. They were made famous for their 14 operettas, such as the Pirates of Penzance. Now there's a close connection between this statue and the Savoy Hotel because Richard Doyley Cart was able to build this from the profits that he made from the Gilbert and Sullivan plays. It was the first hotel when it was built in 1889 to have electricity, therefore the connection with Michael Faraday just up the road. It wouldn't surprise you to know that the Doyley Cart hired a manager called Caesar Ritz who went on to establish the Ritz Hotel on Piccadilly. But again, it was all about quality and service. Before we turn down to see Cleopatra's Needle, we pass the statue of Robert Rakes, who was the founder of the Sunday School movement, which became a crucial working class institution and a centre for mutual aid and association amongst the ever-growing population inside London. Now, although Cleopatra's Needle looks like it's been there for a long time, it was only established in 1878 after the embankment was built. But it actually dates back to 1460 BC to the pharaoh Thotmes III, who was brought from Alexandria, which was Cleopatra's city, hence the name. And it was there to signify the victory over Napoleon in 1815. Now, it's also quite ironic that the vessel almost got lost when it was coming across in 1877, just at the Bay of Biscay, which is just around France. However, it was found and it was successfully put up, and there is in fact a time capsule buried underneath it, which includes children's toys and pictures of the pretty women of London. You'll also see that there's Cleopatra Needle's Sphinxes, just as you exit back onto Victoria Embankment where in front of you you'll see the Belgium War Memorial, which was donated for the help and assistance in World War I between 1914 and 1918. Keeping on the theme of memorials, you'll also see there's a very small statue called the Camel Corp, which was also associated with the First World War, but it was to do with the campaigns in the Middle East, where we had a number of campaigns and this was a special force of British and Australians and New Zealanders fighting on camels. One of the buildings that you see along here is Shelmex House, which was opened in 1931, but on the site of the Hotel Cecile, which you can see in the bottom left-hand corner. As the names imply, it was a headquarters for Shell Petrochemical Company, and its clock face was actually known as Big Benzene at the time, and now it's now known as 80 The Strand. Finishing off this tour, we go past Robert Burns, who was the National Poet of Scotland, and he was born between 1759 and 1796, and is the pioneer of the Romantic movement. 
We then see your gate, which we saw earlier on the run, and this was originally fronting the River Thames. It was built by George Villiers, the Duke of Buckingham. And you can see the immense distance in terms of land that was reclaimed when they built Victoria Embankment. Now, as we come out of the streets, we actually hit Villiers Street, which is named after George Villiers in 1626, which is when he built the York Gate. And Villiers Street goes all the way up to the Strand. And Charles Dickens had to work at Hungerford Stairs, just nearby here in 1812, because his father was in a debtor's prison. And this is where he met a friend called Fagan, which appeared in his book in Oliver Twist. And that ends part three.